Films about sex workers are never a fun watch. No matter how much Paul Thomas Anderson jazzed it up in Boogie Nights or Tony Scott Tarantino Tarantino script for True Romance or Catherine Deneuve sparkled in Belle de Jour, what should be told in these films is the truth, the harrowing truth, about the lives of sex workers. Stella Does Tricks certainly lays it bare in a very raw and uncompromising way. Writer A. L. Kennedy was contacted by director Koki Giedroyk, who was looking to make her foray into feature filmmaking after reading one of Kennedy's early short stories about a child who was groomed by a boyfriend and had run away. Giedroyk had also been interviewing sex workers in Manchester and asked Kennedy to infuse some of those stories into the screenplay. Kennedy felt uncomfortable doing that, using a big chunk of somebody's life as the basis for a script about sex workers. Instead, she used some of her old research from the short story to write Stella Does Tricks. You want a really good cum. You want hash. Hash in the brown eye. What's this? Cannabis raisin. Up your arse. Oh my angel. Do it now. Every time Kennedy wrote a new version of the script, she had to go to the British Film Institute and present it to those holding the purse strings. The British Film Institute lumped up a tiny amount of cash, but then it turned out they couldn't commit to the full amount they had previously allocated. A jaunt to Scotland saw the production granted money from the Scottish Arts Council Lottery Fund, the first feature film to be given money. But hoops had to be jumped through to get that money, and people who were not involved in the entertainment industry sat on the board. And when Kennedy made an impassioned plea for the funding, it fell to people who just didn't understand the need in order to make a film about a sex worker from Glasgow, now living in London. Thankfully, the money was eventually forthcoming and it meant filming could begin in London and Glasgow. Kelly MacDonald signed on to play Stella. She'd just finished filming Trainspotting, but the film had yet to be released. Production were looking for someone who wasn't underage, but looked it. MacDonald managed to solve both those problems. You can see in the first scene in the film, as Stella goes to buy an ice cream, she has her hair in pigtails, looking extremely young teenagery. MacDonald was 20 years of old at that time. Giedroyk worked with Ken Loach's director of photography, Barry Aykroyd. As such, the film took on a harder, grittier look than Kennedy has envisaged with her script. But there was such little money for filming that everything was being done once or twice at a stretch. The scene where Stella blows up a car had to be done in one take as they couldn't afford another car to blow up. With a budget as small as it had, it meant the film had to be shot over a two week period. <laughs> Shot in the mid-90s, Stella Does Tricks just could not get a distribution deal. It eventually got a small release some three years later. It didn't help that, because it was partially funded by the lottery, some of the more right-wing newspapers lamblasted it for using money to make a porno about sex workers, completely missing the point of what the film was actually about. Yet for all the struggles getting Stella Does Tricks made and distributed, when it was eventually released, it did make a few waves with some film critics. Barry Norman gave it a positive review on his film programme. Norman also pointed out that the actor Richard Sims, who appears in the film in Just His Pants, was actually the film critic's friend and local vicar. A day later, and swarms of newspaper reporters had descended on Dashworth Village to film the porn film cleric. But for all the noise Norman and some of his other film critics made about the film, Stella Does Tricks never really found an audience. MacDonald deservedly so received praise for her performance. The entire film fell on her shoulders. She appears in nearly every scene featuring the adult Stella. Kennedy spent just one day on set and was blown away by MacDonald's performance. Considering this was only her second feature film, it's a stunning feat to be able to hold a film as emotionally charged as this and give a performance with so much nuance and complexity to the character. I don't need it. You never used to lie to me. I don't. Where were you last night? I was sick. Bill. It upset me. You live where I put you, Stella. That's why I know where you go with everything. You went out. Who with? Stella Does Tricks is a tough viewing experience. There's a train of thought that Stella can never be happy. Even after stopping tricks and getting a job as a florist, she had to deal with a drug abuser boyfriend and the constant memories of parental abuse. If this film had been released nowadays, everybody involved would have been praised due to their perceptive portraits of a life as a young sex worker. 
add into the mix a touch of revenge, and you have a film that deserves much better respect and recognition. But that's why I'm here. To tell you stories. So, picture the scene. 